Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Phoenix, Arizona, it's time for Phoenix Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Welcome to Rhino Nation Radio, sponsored by Rhino Online Strategies and eCreativity. Rhino Nation is a growing community of incredible entrepreneurs and small business owners that share a common trait. They don't walk, they don't run, they charge to their destiny. From the mind-blowing talents of Generation Next to the treasure trove of seasoned business minds, we acknowledge and celebrate their business expertise, leadership, and fearless attitude to be victorious in their goals. Rhino Nation is committed to making powerful connections and providing enhanced exposure to broaden the reach and promote the extraordinary talents of our community members. I'm Michelle Faust, along with my co-host, Jacob Fan, founder and creative genius of Fantastic Media. And with great pleasure, I want to introduce our two guests today, the Savvy Blondes, Ash Krupnik and Caitlin Martin. Hi, Welcome. I'm Ash. And I'm Caitlin. And, and we're, we're the, the Savvy Blondes. Blondes. <laughs> 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 <I get it. laughs> and you are Savvy Blondes. Yeah, I can't wait to jump into this because um, I have a particular fondness for millennials, so I'm really excited to have you guys here. So what I would like to do to start off is give you each a minute to just give a little bit of, of, of your story and your bio, and then the back story of the Savvy Blondes and how it came to being. Sure, I'll go first. Okay. So I'm Ash, and... I used to be a wardrobe stylist. That's how I met Caitlin. And we started working together um, through our work in the fashion world here in Phoenix. And as our relationship sort of grew organically, we kind of morphed a lot into, you know, kind of what we are today. And we can go over that journey in a bit. But for me personally, I kind of went from wardrobe stylist to life and wellness coach, and I'm now a holistic health coach, which is super exciting. And I love my job. I love my work and what I do to help people live better um, from a more holistic standpoint. And I also just started a blog and Instagram with my husband called Our Little Romance. And we are so excited to be launching that. We're actually going to be working with Jacob um, to get that off the ground. And, you know, it's just kind of an honest, raw and authentic look at millennial marriage and what it means to be married, what it means to walk that walk and talk the talk. And, you know, there's going to be happy moments and sad moments and pretty much everything in between. So we're super excited about that. So. Yeah, I'll be following that story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but incredible. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'm happy wife of uh, over 13 years, and I've got four little kids at home uh, between the ages of 12 and a half and five and a half, and um, yeah, that's that's pretty much me. And that that's a great and story. it's a lot. I love that <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And you still find time to be here oh, in the yeah. studio and oh, yeah. everything. It else helps that, you that do. they're all school age yeah. now. Yes. So it's like Mama's got time during the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Caitlin, how about you? So uh, my name's Caitlin, and like Ash said, we met in the fashion industry. So I am a model. I'm also a published hair and makeup artist. So I do a lot of makeup for runway shows and photo shoots and have recently gotten into pageants. So I do hair and makeup for pageants, but I also am a title holder currently in the Miss America slash Arizona Scholarship Organization. I hold the title of Miss Gilbert 2019 and I compete for Miss Arizona in June. So this was my first pageant I ever competed in and I kind of I utilize a lot of what Ash and I do in our nonprofit, The Emergent Collective, to fuel my passion for my platform, which is the Wonder Woman movement, Empowered Women in Power. And I speak to girls that are in school about anti-bullying techniques and why we really need to work collaboratively versus competitively with one another in order to ensure that we're doing the best things that we can. I also have rebranded myself since starting the pageant because everybody in the pageant world calls me Barbie. <laughs> So I, now I wonder by, why <laughs> I now go by the Arizona Barbie. Um, so you can find that on Instagram. And I kind of just detail my journey as a millennial, um, empowering young women and inspiring them to be their best selves and live authentically in everything they do. Wow. We have a live Barbie. <laughs> yes. Believe it. That's incredible. And and I just have to say, you know, I, I, I want to turn it back over for the backstory, but 
you inspire me. And, and just even in the few minutes of, of just introducing yourselves and um, all that you are involved in and all that you do really turns the opinion some people have of millennials are lazy. It turns that pretty much upside down, doesn't it? Well, thank yeah. you. We hope so. Definitely. Yeah. Well, exactly. You do. So give me a bit, uh, a bit of the story behind Savvy Blondes. It all kind of started pretty suddenly. I think one day we were... Um, at work together. Yeah. And I was like, hey, let's start a YouTube channel. And my thought behind that, you know, when I when I talked to Caitlin initially was, you know, we work with so many different women and so many different age groups and platforms. And one area that we really hadn't put a lot of focus into reaching for the sake of empowering and, and loving on and serving is the millennials, which is, you know, our generation, our age group. And so we really wanted a chance to get in front of millennials in a way that was meaningful to them, in a way that was relevant to them, to talk about things that, you know, were relevant to millennials and that mattered to them. Uh, one of the things that we noticed a lot with our peers and even maybe a little bit with ourselves <laughs> is that there's some uh, education gaps with millennials. Yeah. I think kind of the history behind that seems to be that the kiddos who were born in the millennial gener generation and even some of the younger zennials, which I am one, um, were really the first generation to go through school without having home ec and without having shop. And so that in combination with the fact that cable TV exploded in the 90s and parents were kind of realizing, oh, like I can stick my kid in front of a TV and they've got programming to watch all day long. And, you know, we can justify it because maybe some of it's educational. So with sort of the those two things running parallel, we really noticed that there was a lot of just adulting skills, if you will, that millennials were missing. You know, a lot of us don't know how to file our taxes on our own. We can't, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, millennials who don't know how to change a tire on a car, don't know how to oh. fix simple things around yeah. the house. They don't know, you know, how to do much more in the kitchen than boil water and make, you know, instant mac and cheese yeah. and, you know, like things toast. like that. Yeah. <laughs> so we wanted to have a place where we could offer some of that education to millennials through other millennials who kind of have mastered those particular areas of adulting. And then Caitlin can share a little bit about, you know, the mental health aspect that we wanted to reach out and talk about to that generation, to our generation as well. Oh, please. Yeah. yeah so um, one of the other really big components, I think, with the millennial generation is that we are so focused on being go, 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 because we have this huge stigma against us that we're lazy and that we're not doing great things. And so we work so hard to do those things that we forget so much about ourselves. And obviously we hear like, oh, self-care is so important, but nobody really shares what self-care actually is or what that means and how it looks different for every individual person. And so with all of those components kind of put together, you create a lot of mental health issues for our generation because we're trying so hard to please everybody that we really forget about ourselves and our mind, our mindfulness and our goal is kind of to bring to light that it's okay that you're struggling with anxiety and that sometimes it's crippling and that sometimes you're depressed and that you don't want to get out of bed in the mornings and that's completely normal and nobody should tell you otherwise and that instead of, you know, bringing yourself down more so that you really need to like find the ways to bring yourself back up, whether that's talking to somebody and normalizing, going to a psychiatrist or a therapist or whomever, or if that's taking that moment for self-care on Sundays, you know, if that's when you choose to do it, or if you're doing the self-care on Wednesday evenings when you know your kids aren't home and you have that hour to yourself just to recenter yourself and become okay with the life that you're living in the state that you're in and recognizing that, yeah, things aren't going to be okay, but that's a part of life and that you just need to handle it in a more positive way. Yeah. So. I love that. And also, I think a big part of it, too, is we wanted to celebrate millennials as yes. much as we get so much crap from everybody in the media. And like Caitlin was saying, mill millennials are so lazy. And honestly, we're not lazy. We're just incredibly efficient. Yeah. So well, we get a lot done in a lot yeah. less time. Yeah. We work smarter, not harder. And 
So we wanted to celebrate all of those really amazing, unique things about millennials and give us a space to celebrate ourselves, but also to kind of poke fun at ourselves every so often. And so, you know, we we joke about things like we may not know how to file taxes, but we can tell you that mitochondria is the, powerhouse, the powerhouse of the, of the cell, cell. <laughs> or, you know, the reason millennials are always at brunch and everybody, you know, who's a millennial is obsessed with brunch is because we can't afford, afford to eat it. more than twice a day. Right. We can't you know, like eat breakfast we're making lunch. no money. So we brunch and we eat dinner and that's you know that's our what we got for the day so there you go so you make do with you know the well, best you yeah. Have, yeah. You have well i totally agree with you that you work smarter and i think you work harder but it dawned on me at one point in time where i was hearing a lot of my generation saying these kinds of things about millennial i'm like i don't really see that well i kind of did but then i started surrounding myself with so many really brilliant genius creative wonderful millennials and i started saying okay why are they getting this rap and then that was my revelation was you understand how to do it differently than my generation right. did Absolutely. so because we don't see you going to work eight to five sitting right. behind the desk right. you know doing the traditional ways that we have always done our work yep exactly that's yep. exactly it. Yeah. so and a lot of i us, applaud like, you we don't have that continuing formal education so a lot no. of us didn't go to college i mean i started college and i i dropped out it wasn't for me and i don't think you know college is for everyone and so mm -hmm. some of us did go to college and some of us didn't and mm -hmm. for you know our parents and our grandparents it was very much i think ingrained into us that college was a non-negotiable after you graduated and you know we found other ways to make our careers happen and we found you know, not necessarily shortcuts, but we found ways that are more efficient of getting what we want out of life without having to be crippled by student debt after a four or six or eight year degree. I think that's a huge whole nother subject is education. Yeah, yeah. Debt. <laughs> we could and go on. How and on. Well, I could totally and, do you that. know, I have been a proponent of education all my life, but I'm starting to understand that to maybe the traditional university approach isn't absolutely always there i mean you want a certain profession yes but mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with trade schools oh, or you know just internships and right. just you know working your way into whatever your passion well, is. well kind of what you were just saying and how they were talking is is that a lot of the colleges don't teach i mean like i'm in marketing right right i didn't go when i first started i was in political science and you know nothing when you go out of college you don't know how to do your taxes you don't know how to write a check you don't know how to start a business and so that's why i talk to michelle a lot you know when i first turned 18 years old i got my real estate license and that taught me practical experience that you don't learn in college right yeah. and i think you're right like uh you know, my grandparents are in that, you know, that generation is you're going to college. Right. Now, I think it's a time to where I don't know, because you're seeing people in hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. And a lot of people don't make that right after college. And they're going into that type of debt. Right. Yeah. So. No, I know my my husband um, went to law school and he's got um, a colleague who is probably about 15 to 20 years older than he is, who just finished paying off his student debt. And, you know, they he's been a lawyer for probably 20 years. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, it's a lawyer, not like, you know, working minimum wage somewhere, like making a decent salary yep. as a partner at a firm right, right. and just paid off his student debt. So it's, pretty wild. it's insane. Well, I, you know, I, I know some doctors who are, you know, fairly new right. out of residency mm -hmm. and working and, you know, they can't, some of them can't even afford a home because yeah, they're so right. saddled by the debt. Yeah. And that's just not the world of, of what lawyers and doctors were once upon a time. So it no. makes you makes me kind of concerned about, you know, what our future is to have those kinds of because those professions are important. And, right. Um, Absolutely. You know, um, still need to be able to embrace, you know, and uh, enable. Right. Um, well, and like I'm going to school for education and it's the same thing. It's almost worse because like with a doctor or being a lawyer, you at least like know down the line, most likely you're going to make like a solid income and it helps. Mm -hmm. And like for education, you don't like you make 30, 40,000 a year, maybe if you're lucky and you have a lot of debt when you come out and like they constantly want you to be getting more classes and a higher degree and they want you to major in other things so like if you're an elementary ed major and they really want you doing science they want you taking science classes so that they know you're giving those students the best of your teaching abilities which is wonderful but that all costs money and most of the time they don't offer to pay for that 
No, and I would say something. One thing I'll tell the older generations that they have right is, is that, look, I started my business three years ago in college. And I will tell everyone when our parents and our grandparents just say, you know, after college, go work for someone, right? They'll say, go get a job. The only thing I will say is there's a reason behind that because a lot of people don't have the experience Right. So they need to learn the experience so they don't make the mistakes that they do. And then again, you take it from the other side is that I've made mistakes as a business owner that I wouldn't have learned if I didn't have my own business. So there's certain traits, but it's like you see what the older generation and your parents say when they say, go work for someone for five, 10 years because you'll learn how to make you will learn not to make those mistakes and things like that. Right. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Let's talk about the show a little bit, the YouTube show. All right. First of all, you chose the YouTube format. Yes. Um, yeah. That's yeah. our main platform. Yep. And it's working well for you? So far. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, we just launched uh, the first week of January and we put out a new episode every week. So I think we're up to <laughs> about eight or nine episodes I think we're on episode now. nine, yeah. yeah. So it's been fun so far. It's been but, a lot of learning. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, that. That's what life is about is yes. learning. You want to hope that you're learning along the way. Absolutely. Yes. I yeah. think, yeah, there's definitely been, I, <laughs> I wonder, I don't, I think maybe one or two videos that have gone completely smoothly with no technical issues yeah. or no, um, like, for example, this last, <laughs> we had an interview, an incredible interview with Jane Fendelman, who's a really well-renowned um, marriage and couples therapist here in Phoenix. And she's incredible. She was our sex expert for our show. She came onto our show to help teach millennials and females in particular how to embrace their sexuality and all of that, right? So it's kind of a little more of an edgy topic than what we normally stick to. And she is one of the most open, honest, hard on sleeve people you'll ever meet. And we had three hours of amazing interview. Wow. with the microphone turned off yeah oh so <laughs> no. jane if you're listening i'm sorry we're gonna have to redo the episodes yeah. um but all that to say at least for Ooh. next time maybe we won't be recording for three hours i think it'll be a little more concise and oh, and yeah. we'll be able to kind of <laughs> get to that point a little faster but you know we've had issues from that too i think the very first episode we recorded um (laughs) we record at our location sponsor which is thrive co-working space Uh in downtown gilbert and um there was a train (laughs) that went by and we thought you know it's far enough away but no once you've got the sound it was just like (laughs) and you're just like really so we had to re-record that one so it definitely has been a learning curve, but we've had some really great, you know, guests on our show and we've had really awesome topics so far and we're looking forward to what's to come. What's been your favorite topic? If you can pick one. Oh, the sex episodes were going to oh, be so good. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm so excited. Sad. I'm excited for those to, to happen. Um, but besides that, I think my favorite episode was the one that I got to do with my husband this last month because okay. our focus for February was on love. And so um, I kind of had Caitlin take the reins on, you know, deciding what episodes to do and stuff for the month of February because she's a total Valentine's Day girl. And so we actually wound up filming um, an episode right before Valentine's yeah. Day. Yep. Yeah with uh, my husband, Tim, and I um, on our love story and sort of how we make long-term relationship work. So that was probably my favorite episode so far. I actually have to agree with you. That was also one of my favorite episodes. It was when I announced uh, my new business venture called The Millennial Matchmaker, and I curate Bumble and Tinder profiles. And I think all of my clients are constantly coming to me being like, I don't know how to make long-term relationships work as millennial. Like, I just don't get it. It's not something I can see. And so Getting to really know Ash and Tim and their story and like how they make things work and what they do. And it just all was so wonderful. And it like gives me butterflies to think about because they're so happy. (laughs) And I want that for myself, but I want that for all of the people that like I get to touch their lives and help them find that special person. So, and it was fun because, you know, my my husband has never been in one of our episodes Mm -hmm. or anything. And he's not a super out there type of person. He doesn't like to be on social media a ton. Like he's not really out there in the public eye at all. And uh, so I wasn't sure how he was going to do, but he was a natural. He totally just like (laughs) got in there and just the one clip. There's one clip of him talking for like two minutes, just going off about like finding love and how you like make it work and how like you wake up every day and sometimes you're not happy, but like 
you just put in the work and like it's we put it in two different videos two different episodes that we've released so far because it was just so good yeah you can find it if you're looking for that clip specifically it's at the end it's probably easiest to find at the end of the valentine's mini sode mm -hmm. so we released a mini episode that week of just kind of testimonials from different ladies around us at our co-working space and different friends who wanted to talk about love and what it means to them and so there's that two minute clip at the end of the mini sode. So if you go looking for that clip, it's there. <laughs> but yeah, he's and he, you know, he had like the epic walkout at the end because yes. it was just super casual. We were standing around, <clears throat> excuse me, in the kitchen at Thrive and he was like eating a chocolate, like a Ghirardelli yeah. chocolate. And so he's, you know, sitting there just real, you know, into it, what he's saying. And then he's like, and that's just how it is. And pops the rest of the chocolate in his mouth and turns around and walks out. We're just like, oh, mic drop. Like, it was so good. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for that. Episode. Yes. It was awesome. It's so cute. I, I'm sorry. I just had that vision. You just gave me that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I just like I'm just gonna, like ran it back through my head again, and because I know Tim, and I yes. totally get what you're saying on that, and that's really cool that yeah. that he was on the show. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're right about relationship. Well, in any gener generation, yeah. they're hard, mm -hmm. but also the mill millennials have grown up seeing their parents divorced, yeah, yes, um, and you know, struggling with their own relationship. So there hasn't always been good role models for teaching good, solid, long-term relationship. Um, and I, yeah, and, and even going into, like, my daughter, um, both of them, 32 and 28, and um, I, I see that all the time in the people that they're meeting that, you know, they're not finding people who understand long-term relationships. No. It's all about the now. Right. And uh, so I think that's a great, great subject that you guys are, are talking about. Yeah. Thank you. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So is your millennial matchmaking um, like live and ongoing or is this So a it's slowly building up. I have a couple of clients who are just like friends because when I go on dating sites, it's really easy for people to like swipe right on me. Like I get a lot of that and like people wanting to go on dates with me. And it's like, just so gorgeous. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. No, it's all in the bio. I promise. Like I look at my friends profiles and I'm like, why, why are people not swiping right on me? And I'm like, well, your pictures are bad. Like, you don't have good pictures. And, like, they're beautiful of you, but, like, they don't show anything off about you. They're not interesting. And then your bio is either too long or it's non-existent or the stuff in it isn't interesting and doesn't make somebody be like, wow, I really need to meet this girl. And so I started off doing it for a couple of friends. And so far, it's been actually really successful. I handle all of their calendar bookings also. So, like, they put oh, their well. availability <laughs> in. And, like, I literally will set up the dates for them. And like talk to the people for them. Because yeah. one of the things I'm also finding is that people in our generation are either really, really extroverted and wonderful at talking to the opposite gender or the same gender, whatever gender they're romantically interested in, or they're really awkward and like not at all. And they do what I call either turtling or potatoing. Turtling <laughs> or potatoing. So potatoing is like, you're just like sitting there and like don't know what to say and like you're just like really uncomfortable and it makes everybody else involved super uncomfortable or turtling is like where somebody says something to you and you like crawl in your shell and just like hide also very uncomfortable where you're like you're interested so you kind of put feelers out there but then the moment it's reciprocated you kind of get anxiety and you're, and like, you're like no oh, crap now i have to do something about this yeah and then yeah. you don't and then nothing happens so are we gonna hashtag uh, turtling and potatoing <laughs> when we uh put right. the podcast yes, out yes, exactly yes but yeah so it's been really fun getting to help them. And I think my success rate has been really good so far. So I'm excited to like launch it into the public. I do have an Instagram page for it. And I just share like little tips and tricks for like helping your profile be better and stuff. But then ultimately the goal is to have people want full on help, which is what I'm excited to share also once everything is kind of done. So well, I think yeah. the thing that I love, I really love about your business model, too, is that you help with the photos. Mm -hmm. So you're not just like, oh, your photos kind of suck. They're just mirror selfies. Oh, no. Like, let's you're like, let's fix this. I know photographers. I can do your hair and makeup like, you yeah. you know, f me for styling or, you know, she's really great at styling, too. So, you know, she has those resources and those gifts and talents to be able to really curate their image the way that in they a way that portray. feels authentic to them. But in a way that's like, let me upgrade you, you know, well, exactly. like it's just like yeah. the one. <laughs> One of my good friends, the first friend I ever did this for, her profiles, her profile pictures on it were all like just selfies of herself, like you said. 
And I was like, no, you need one with a dog. And she's like, well, I don't have a dog. So I was like, okay, we're going to use my dog. And then that's something you put in your profile. I was like, my best friend's dog is cuter than yours. And then like, we're going to have a picture of you with your friends and then a picture of you hiking. And like, we did all of these pictures in one day. She did six outfit changes and we got it. So it looked like these were taken on like multiple different days. And she goes on dates with guys now and they're like, oh my gosh, where is this from? And she's like, so funny story. And she shares it with them and they love it. They think it's the coolest thing ever. Right. Well, I'll share. Oh, I was eating. Well, I was going to share a quick story. So I'm not someone that goes on those, you know, dating sites or anything like that. But I remember in college, uh, my junior, senior year, when I started my business, my friends put me on, I think it was Tinder. <laughs> and it was funny because I have a picture of my grandpa and I. And so I put it on there and I said, I'm the guy on the left, which it was my grandfather. <laughs> and it had a bunch of people swiping on it. And it was just a funny little thing because they yes. knew it was just really funny. But that was kind of just a little funny thing. Yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> I think with, you know, with that, anytime you're able to interject a piece of yourself, especially humor into yeah. your profile, whether it's business related, whether it's dating related, you know, whatever, anytime you're able to interject that little piece of yourself personally, it just lets people know you're authentic, you're real, it gives them something to connect to. And at the end of the day, I think that's one of the most important things for millennials is we want to be connected. We want to be connected to people, whether it's virtually or in person or through podcasts, you know, all that. Yeah. Well, that's the beauty too of, of, of the, the time now is there are so many ways to connect. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people are great at being, you know, right, you know, one-on-one with people. Some mm-hmm. people are, are better at going through email at first, getting to know someone that way or, you know, hearing the podcast. I think it's great that we have the different option of be, to be able to connect. But I was going to circle back to talking about photographs and, and yeah. you know, what you've been doing because... I had an experience not long ago um, where I had uh, Carrie Ann Munstead. She had her own studio. And we did a similar thing where Mm -hmm. we did the hair, the makeup, the different outfits. And because all I had was a headshot, a just boring headshot. And I said, I want people to know who I am. I want right. I want my photos to have that essence of of, of me. And um, I've never considered myself to be photogenic, but my goodness, did you she take so an amazing beautiful. picture? Thank you both you. did amazing. Thank you. I, I credit her, you know, um, so much for being able to bring that out in me. Yes. Because. I tend to not give the big smile and the laugh, yeah. you know, type of thing when I'm being photographed because I'm just too conservative, on, you know, uh, uh, to do that. And she would just break out in this. <laughs> and, I'm Aww, and that's contagious. Yeah, so and you and just kind of join in and then yeah. she gets like and the most natural snap, picture. Snap, snap. Yeah, and it's a natural that's picture. Brilliant. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So I would really encourage people to get those kind of photographs Absolutely. because it just, you know, it really brings out again, the authenticity of who you are. Absolutely. We had a photo shoot not too long ago (laughs) with a photographer friend of ours that we know from the fashion world. And we've known him for several years. And he's he's one of the few photographers in the area, male photographers in the area in the fashion world who is not kind of creepy. And so um, (laughs) he's not a guy with camera. It's a problem. It's a huge problem. It's a problem. Anyway, so we did a a branding shoot with him in downtown Gilbert. And um, you know, I'm I'm not a professional model by any means. I mean, I take selfies of myself and whatever, and I can pull that off because I can see what I look like and I delete a lot of them. But Caitlin is so much more natural at this. And so it was funny because you look back through the photos and there were some where, you know, Caitlin just effortlessly, ha, 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 you know, just <laughs> laughing and being so effortless. And I'm just there like trying to force it. So I'm like, ha, 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 like, <laughs> And it did not look natural at all. And I just, you know, my neck was it. My, my neck disappeared. I have a great neck and it just completely was gone. <laughs> and I looked like a potato. No, so, I <laughs> like well, a potato. no, not in all of them, but certainly in, in a lot more of them. But it was funny because we got these matching dresses. And so we're out front of uh, oh. <laughs> Peterson's ice cream in downtown Gilbert. So we had been shooting in there. It was super cute aesthetic. We come out front and uh, our photographer, Jam, wanted to shoot some of us on the street. And so, you know, we were, we were you know, posing and people were passing by like, oh, I bet they're doing this for the Instagram and, you know, just being super judgy about it. And we were just having fun. And so towards the end of that series of photos, I grabbed her hand. I said, let's just go skip down the street. And so, you know, we, we grab hands and we're just laughing, dying, laughing, skipping down the street. And so we get to the end and Jam's like, all right, come on back. Let's get some of you, you know, coming towards me. 
And so we turn around and we're holding hands and we, we go to, you know, start running down the street and there's people sitting outside and on this patio restaurant. And they're like, congratulations, you guys are amazing. And we're like, thank you. Oh, like, oh, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, isn't it nice that there's that level of acceptance? Uh, yes, you know? yes, absolutely. Because that, that could have gone one of two ways. And so, I, you know, thankfully it was a positive experience. And that, that that's a great uh, litmus test for how, how well our culture is uh, being more accepting and loving yes. to everyone and being inclusive. But it was, it was pretty funny. So we, uh, you know, and she's got the long hair. I've got the real short hair. And it, mine's like buzzed in the back. And, you know, so it was just... It was just funny, but we, we had a really great time and, you know, it's cool to be able to see yourself come through on photos like that. Cause you don't know. And that's what I hate is not being able to look at the back of the camera after every shot. Yeah. And, you know, you just kind of have to go on some faith and trust that your photographer knows what they're doing. Yeah. I, th- I just think of a joke in my head. Like I did a photo shoot for the pageant with one of my princesses and she's 12. So she's in that really fun phase where she doesn't really want to smile. She doesn't like her smile, whatever. And, my directors were like, you need to tell her a joke. And I just told the dumbest joke. I was, okay, Ash, we're going to do this. What is Barbie's favorite food to eat? I, Say what? What? <laughs> Barbecue. Oh, God. <laughs> and they were just, it was so horrible that everybody started laughing. And we got amazing photos from it. That's but so that's awesome. just what I think about in my head. And then it makes me laugh because I'm like, wow, it's so stupid. And that's what I tell everybody. <laughs> I just come with like really, really bad jokes and horrible humor. It's fine. <laughs> whatever works right yes absolutely it's kind of like those smiling with your whole body mm-hmm. yeah you know as, as opposed to the pose smile right, you the know pose portrait sort smile. Of put your whole self into it and i think like people they don't know how to smile on camera like in, when somebody tells you to smile your instant reaction usually is for you to clench your jaw and put your molars together and smile with your teeth closed together and like that creates a really really forced looking smile versus one where you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and the back of your teeth aren't connected. Yeah. And it makes it look a lot more authentic. Well, it's funny too, because not just with smiles, but as well talking on camera, yes. right? It's funny because when I'm with clients and I'm doing their, I have a photographer doing their videos or anything like that, they're completely different when I'm just speaking to them mm-hmm. than yeah. when a camera goes up and they're like, uh, uh. <laughs> they like get yeah, they're just like very and tense. Like, so. And I'm like, just talk to me. Like, yeah. talk to me how you're talking. He's like, it's completely different. When, I'm, like, when I see a camera right there. And then another thing is, it's funny because um, how I smile, I smile really big with both my uh, brackets of teeth or bottom and top. And my grandma all the time is like, can you just take a photo, just like a regular <laughs> smile and not doing too much? And I'm like, that's my smile. I don't know what to tell you. And she's like, uh, and she's like, I need a real professional photo of you with not that type of smile. Oh. And it's just funny because it, it, that's my smile. And I can't You've help got it. a great smile. And that's, that's exactly what I'd want to capture. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Well, and that's like one of the reasons I knew Caitlin and I would be such a great fit for YouTube. But she and I are like obsessed with Facebook Live. And, you know, we've been in several Facebook groups where, you know, we go on and do lives like educational uh, live videos once a month or so. And you know, we're both incredibly comfortable in front of the camera. It does not phase us in the slightest. And we're very conversational. Um, Mm -hmm. She and I have really good chemistry that way. And so when I was thinking, thanks, Ash. I love you. Yeah, you too. We're having a moment. Um, Anyway, so I knew that we would be a really great fit to start a YouTube channel together. And, you know, so far, I feel like there hasn't really been a lot of awkward pauses where we kind of don't know what to say or we kind of just like, sisters we just kind of pick it up and go yeah so you have a lot of fun on your show obviously but um you have a serious side of of what you're trying to do and educate and whatnot so speak to that a little bit of some of the topics that you really try to bring to the millennials well i think mental health for one i know caitlin touched on that a little bit but just to reiterate a little on that just to let millennials know they're not alone i think you know, we each have, you know, different traumas in our childhood and in our background that kind of contribute to our fears and anxieties as adults. And, you know, being able to say like, me too, or, you know, that also happened with me, or this is how I get through it, or I struggle with this. And I I bet you do too. We really hope to create a very safe space for millennials to not only tune in and feel normal, but to tune in and think, oh, there's hope. And I think back to what I wish I had or what I wish I could have seen or been through as an older teenager struggling with, you know, anxiety and depression. And had there been YouTube channel with somebody 
talking to me about issues I was struggling with, I think I wouldn't have felt so alone and so uncomfortable in my own skin and isolated. And so that's definitely one of the issues we talk about. What else? I mean, I can think of like the stuff that we discussed in the sex episode a little bit. Um, Ash and I both have like um, dealt with sexual assault. And so um, we've spoken about that a little bit. And that'll be one of the episodes that'll be coming up, I think, in March or April. Um, just talking about that and that it's okay that like it's happened to you. It's happened to a lot of our friends, actually, a lot of people that we know. Probably more than people realize. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that... You know, it's not okay that that happened to you, but it's also not your fault. Like, mm-hmm. and just kind of helping to remove the stigma of shame, absolutely, and victim blaming and shaming surrounding that whole issue. And uh, you know, with the sex episodes that we were recording too, uh, it was interesting getting to talk to you know Caitlin and having Jane kind of interact with both of us. We both have similar but different experiences when it comes to, you know, how we were educated on sex and being comfortable with our sexuality. And so that was something that I I really appreciated that Jane took the time to really kind of help us delve into why millennials can be so uncomfortable with their sexuality yeah. and, you know, females in particular and, you know, helping us kind of understand where the balance is and, and yeah, I think there was it. a really big difference between you and I in that episode. And I think part of it has to do with age, but part of it also has to do with like what we were taught in school about sex. And like I was over there like in the corner, like laughing and just like dying. And J- Jane would keep asking me questions. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to answer that. I don't know what to tell you. Like, we're an uncomfortable potato. <laughs> I, I, I told her I was like, I am currently being a potato. I am a potato. Yeah, She was like red in the face, like just no uh, words. It yeah, was no, really cute. No words. <laughs> So, yeah, like, I think that it's really just relatable on both facets, both facets, because Ash is over here like powerhouse and super, you know, Wonder Woman-y. And I'm over here like, I don't know what to say. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. Well, and we, you know, we bring we bring such different life experiences and life stages to the Mm -hmm. table as well. I mean, you know, Caitlin's one of the younger millennials and 22. Yes, she's 22 (laughs) and I'll be 32 in a couple months. So we're about 10 years apart or nine and a half. And, um, you know, she's single and young and in college and still sort of figuring out what she's what path she's on and. Uh, you know, she's so busy. She's got so much going on and, you know, not always time for relationships and things like that. Yeah. And, you know, whereas on the other hand, like I got married really young and I've been, you know, married for over 13 years and I've got, you know, these kids that I'm responsible for and raising. And so I'm kind of the domesticated diva. And, you know, I so I bring that, you know, well, more like a domesticated house cat. I love naps, let's be honest. Um, but, you know, I bring that well, sort of like, like mom, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, okay. that makes me yeah. more comfortable. Um, <laughs> I bring sort of that different perspective to it of, you know, I have a lot of mom friends who are millennials like me. And while I was probably the first of my friend group to start having kids, Um, people weren't that far behind me. A lot of my girlfriends weren't that far behind me. And so I know there's a lot of millennial moms out there and they have different issues than millennial single girls have, or even millennial girls who are married or in relationships. Relationships. You know, there's just so many different things affecting, you know, these demographics. So I I think it's really cool that we can kind of bring both sides of that coin to the table and validate so many different experiences between the two of us. Right. All right. Well, there's a little more than 10 years between Jacob and I. Um, we won't say how many. Like um, and 11. I'm, and I'm, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 There you go. Um, I'm a little out of the millennial uh, generation. But to that point, that's a lot of what we bring into, you know, our business partnership, too. Mm-hmm. It's just different perspective, um, uh, fresh ideas. Um, it, it's exciting to to actually be with somebody who thinks very differently mm-hmm. than you do. Oh, I but, don't think we've... But, but I was yeah. going to say, but, but the same too. You know, <laughs> not, not totally differently, but just maybe some different perspectives. And um, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just, I love that about our working relationship. Um, God, where do we go from here? There's just like so, much, uh, so many no. directions. Left, where? So, Actually, I'll, can I ask a question? Yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah. I'm a millennial. I'm 24 years old. Um, and so... One of my clients, right, is a um, older gentleman, and he always, de- you know, he doesn't 
I don't know how to explain it, but the other day he was talking to, um, he, he works with dealerships, car dealerships. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to work with all his car dealerships doing all their marketing. And so he's talking to the one of the dealers and he said, I have a bright young guy that can do all your marketing. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Saying I'm a bright young kid. Like, and my ego starts kicking in. I'm like, I have 160 businesses a month and you're saying I'm a bright young kid. And I was like, but he's doing, I, I, it was just weird because it's like, okay, if it was reversed and I was saying about him, I'd be like, well, I have a bright, I, I don't even know how to say that, but it was just a weird. There's a wise old saying. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I'm like, it bothers me because I'm like, it's just, I don't know how to explain it, but he does it because I'm younger. Yeah. And right. so it's just, it's hard to do that because I've, look, when I, when you go into businesses or anything like that, and you can probably say it too, like they already look at you and they already see that you're young. And so they're like, well, they don't have the experience right. and they don't have this because, you know, whatever it's the age. So it kind of, you know, for millennials, you're stuck in this category, even though you may know a, more, but, you know, right. you may know how to optimize it, you know, um, how to do things. But it kind of sucks in that way. So what is your like for response for me? What would you know, I've been thinking, should I bring it up to him to say not to say that? I don't know what to say to him. What would be your advice to me? Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh- I am in the same page as him. I get very irritated when people speak to me like that. So I'm going to have a very different response from you. So yeah, I mean, for me, I'm like, like, I can't say what I want to say on the air. Yeah, you know, exactly. But I, right? <laughs> right? It's, fair. it's like, do they, they have the bleep button? Yes, okay. exactly. I'm like, I have more business than you, bud. Like, yes, you can exactly. Like, like, <laughs> just joking. Right. He's probably listening right now and going to give me a huge talking <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, well, then I'll go first. No one really says that about me anymore because I've got some smile lines that are, you know, indicative that I am not 22. However, I will say that's going to happen at whatever age. There's always going to be someone older than you that believes you're not qualified. And I think you have to get to that point where you're so secure in what you do that it doesn't matter and that you're just kind of letting it roll off. And, you know, if it's bothering you so much, Usually, and I say this with love, that means you have internal work to do. Oh, for sure. And that means that there might be some insecurities hiding there. I love the fact that so many very young people are killing it way more than I am. Older people, a lot of times, tend to get really threatened by young people who are making things happen in a way and at an age and to a level that they didn't think of to do first. Well, I'll tell you, one of my, um, and I, we were talking about this, one of my clients, an influencer, 16 years old, oh, probably yeah. does 150000 a month off of Instagram mm-hmm. and dropped out of college. and I mean, dropped out of school in fourth grade, right? Has no education, no nothing. And it's funny because when I tell older people that, they're like, what? He mm-hmm. has no, like nothing? How is he even doing? And they like degrade him. And I'm like, I mean, he's doing I mean, like it's he's like hard to good, say. Right? He's doing very well for himself. And I'm like, so it's very funny. Um, it's not funny, but you, like I said, it's it feels threatening to them because they worked their butts off and went to college, and they're thinking that you know that was the right way to do it, mm-hmm. and they're seeing what they're making compared to a 16 year old making whatever he's making. It didn't, you know, he spends 45 minutes on YouTube editing and things like that and doing pictures. So it's just very. Like I said, it is threatening, and I see that all the time. Well, I think, too, whenever you're presented... Excuse me, I have, like, a frog in my throat. Whenever you're presented with a conflict, whether it's something someone has said to you or something you've said to another person... So let's take, for example, your client, Mm -hmm. and, you know, he said this to you. My guess is he didn't mean anything passive-aggressive by it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not... but But in... For you... You know, when something like that happens, you have two choices. You can either get bitter or you can get better. And it's the same for him. He can look at somebody who's 16 and making, you know, almost 200,000 a month doing something he probably wouldn't be able to do. And he can choose to get bitter and say he's cheating. He's working the system. He's, you know, whatever. Or he can get better and he can take that energy and he can use it to channel it into making his business better and younger and more innovative and things. And so I think whenever you're you know, presented with someone who has that opinion of you and is treating you like you're an infant and you have no idea what you're doing. (laughs) I think it's, it's normally coming from a place of their insecurity. So I would just say never let someone else's insecurity threaten your own insecurity and just be super sure of who you are and of what you're doing. And, you know, I have all the admiration in the world for young 20 somethings and, you know, teenagers who are just absolutely killing it in business. I think it's amazing, but 
I know that not everyone, my age and older, shares that admiration. A lot of us right. are are getting bitter instead of getting better. Well, it's funny because I just got a text from him saying we are going to have a talk later today. So that's not good. I'm just joking. I'm oh, just joking. Oh, my gosh. I was like, oh, no. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Caitlin, what do you think about that? Well, so, like, I'm on the same page as you. Like, I get that a lot. Um, I also get it more because I'm a girl. And so, like, I walk into businesses and, like, I'm doing stuff or, like, I'm going to school for STEM education. So, like... That science component, I'm in classes with mainly males, and they're like, this girl doesn't know what she's doing. And I'm over here like, excuse me? Like, no, 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 no. I know more than you do, and I pull better grades than you do, so you don't get to talk. But those degrading comments, like, come so much because they look at your outer exterior appearance, and they're like, oh, wow, like, this person is young. They look incapable, or they look like a baby. And so, like, obviously, that's what their brain is like. It's young. It doesn't know, and it's still too fresh to know. Or have been, like, I think, like, callous, like, a lot of older generations thoughts and brains have been and so like they think that there's one right way to do it and i don't think like what he was saying he meant anything like no bad guy sure. because he's very just like this too. very young yeah. bright and like those are all great things yeah, to hear sure. like have somebody say about you it just sucks to have them said about you and then well and i'll tell you too and for if any you know we have any young listeners <laughs> on or you know on facebook or anything like that the biggest thing is is that You know, when I first started my business and I walked into a business with no, with nothing, I knew nothing. I just said, give me your, all your stuff and I'll help you grow. And I gave them an offer. He couldn't refuse despite my age or anything like that. And I think that's what, you know, anyone young millennials or anyone wants to start a business or do something. It doesn't matter about age or anything like that. It's all about performance and the ROI on what they're doing. And they could be 16 or they could be 80 years old. It doesn't matter if you can perform and you can create results for that client or for whatever you're doing. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Yeah. And that's really what it's all well about. Well said. Yeah. I feel like Jacob and I both get that look when somebody says those things about us, though. Like, Ash knows what look I'm talking about that I got on my face for, like, one of my eyebrows raises. And I'm like, excuse me? Well, I was like, in his <laughs> office and I was working. And I hear it. And I'm like, oh, my God. And it was funny because <laughs> the lady that works there in that um, for him looked at me because I'm very close with her. And she was like, you got to say something to him. And I was like... And I was like, I don't know. But I was like, it did catch my ear like when he said it. Um, but I do get it a lot um, with clients. And so it's just something of like, it is what it is. I mean, right. I am young. So, I mean, right. it is what it is. And they still pay me to do their work. Right. So it's and whatever. You're bright. <laughs> so, you're bright. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, my perspective is how do we go about educating people like that? Like my my passion is a bit to try to bridge that gap and help people understand that you need to embrace the generation coming coming up and embrace that that their knowledge and energy and well I think it is and, like I said I think the biggest thing is is that um you got to know and and in my opinion you got to know who your audience is mm-hmm. right now um business owners mo- still business owners are over the age of 40 to 50 years old yeah. and a lot of them are so you have to cater towards that business owners now you're seeing more and more younger people are starting to own businesses and I think in the next five, 10 years, it's going to start saturated with younger people, but you got to know who you're talking to and older people, you know, older business people still want to meet in person. They yeah. still want contracts. They still, you got to think about those mm-hmm. things, right? Younger people are like, oh, we can talk on the internet and we can talk over the phone. Look, 95% of the businesses that I get, I've closed them in person and I have to see them, right? The younger I have, my influencers, they don't care to meet. No, they, okay. All they want is on the phone or through social like media texting. on Instagram, texting. My business owners can't stand that. Oh, right? I don't like, yeah, I don't like meeting people in person. It's easier, like maybe <laughs> once. Sure. And then it's just like, no, like, let's no, not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm an old again. soul when it comes to that. I still need to see. Like every once in a while, but not consistently. <laughs> I'll poke a little fun at myself here because oh, yeah. as, as Jacob and I have been working together, it's all kind of in my mind. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we have so much to talk about and so many things that are in front of us. And I'm like, Jacob, we have to meet. And so he go, okay, and we'll meet. And then I just kind of go, wow, we really didn't need to meet, no. did we? It's like, it's like 15 minutes and you're like. Oh, for sure. And She's making it a desired else? need. I'm like, Jake, like, this is so important. Can you meet today? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, what's going on? We just need to go over these things. And we're sitting there. And by the time the water comes, we're like, oh, okay. Like, that's it. Yeah. Like, that's really it. <laughs> but at least I recognize For that. Sure. And, that's you've good. Been, and you and humor me. And now I'm, I'm learning yes. that I don't have to get so excited about 
everything. But the ahead. one thing I would say is too, and I hope you guys agree, you know, the biggest thing for young people is you can't teach experience. Right. And so it's always good to have an open ear and to be a sponge because you can always learn and grow. And I think that's a, you know, older people say entitlement for you know, the millennials <laughs> and things like that. I do see it out in the yeah. world where it's entitlement. But I think, like I said, you just have to have an open ear. And if you do that, I think you'll be, I don't know the right word, but the older person or anything like that that you're talking to will be more prone to want to work with you. Yeah, like more receptive. By, yeah, exactly. Receptive. Exactly. Yeah. I in think, my opinion. I think with bridging that gap, it's important that both parties learn to recognize and acknowledge and embrace the merits that each bring. And so while you're looking at, you know, maybe older people in their 50s and 60s or in their, you know, mid to late 40s even who are doing business in the way that they've been brought up to do business, you know, with contracts and meeting in person, you know, I think as younger people, we need to not write all of that off and say, that's just the old way of doing things. I think there's merit to all of that. Is it all necessary? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, to write all of that off is to say that their years of experience and how they've done things counts for nothing, well, which I don't think is true, you know, and but, but also it, the street goes both ways for them to look at us and say, wow, they were able to do that over text or yep. an email. That's that saves so much time. I could have been doing, you know, X, Y, Z. And for them to recognize that we are becoming faster, more streamlined and more efficient, I think is key. So when you're able to bridge that gap by by choosing to see the positive aspects in each of them, right? you know, I think that's how you kind of bring those two generations together and say, we can learn from each other. Exactly. You know, I mean, I've learned so much from Michelle and I know Michelle's learned stuff from me. Yep. And I think that's how you kind of have to approach the relationship is what can I bring to the table and what For can sure. I learn from the other person? And yeah. I think as far as entitlement goes, I, I love that you said that because I, I do see that there is entitlement among millennials, but I think a lot of that tends to be misunderstood by the older yeah. generation. And I think I think what millennials are starting to do is we're starting to show up and we're starting to show up like we deserve to be there. And part of that is because we're looked down on as these kids who are kind of playing around with the adults and come to work with dad day or, you know, whatever. But no, we're there to do a job. We're there to do a business. And so we show up like we deserve to be there. And I think a lot of people misread that as entitlement. Sure. And so while there are people who are like, no, I deserve to have everything given to me and I deserve to have all these opportunities. <laughs> and that definitely makes up a portion of oh, our generation. Sure. Yeah. I think a lot of our healthy empowered the way that we show up also kind of gets funneled into that and yeah. i think See, it's yeah i think it's interesting because i get told i'm entitled a lot and i don't call it entitlement i call it challenging them mm -hmm. like and so i think it's funny when people say entitlement because i look at my friends i look at the people i surround myself with and i think that's what it is like it's yeah. like you're challenging this person who's quote unquote in charge and i'm like no no, no. one day i'm going to take your job like <laughs> I, that's like the only like that's it like and that's my attitude with like pretty much anything I go into, regardless of what my place in it is. Like, I don't know how to do this. I'm going to learn how to do it. And I'm going to learn how to For do sure. it better than you to show you that I'm better than you. No, it's, yeah, like, it's optimizing that's that. true. And, that's or true I'm confident. capable. Yeah. What like, I would say is what you just said, I think exactly fits in entrepreneurship and saying yeah. an entrepreneur. Yep. Right. I think, you know, a lot of people, there's a group of people now and it hurts the name. It hurts entrepreneurship because people say I'm an entrepreneur and they're like, OK, so what do you do? They're like, well. I just don't work for anyone and I do a bunch of different things and this and this and this. It's like, okay, no. I work my butt off to say I'm an entrepreneur. So there's that segment of those people that sure. do that and it hurts, you know, it gets this thing of, you know, yeah. just yeah. like entitlement. And I think there's those people in any generation who oh, want for something sure. for nothing. Yeah. For you know sure. what I mean? Yeah. But I think with the accessibility of seeing all of it, yep. it's just been more highlighted with our generation. Mm -hmm. So it's more glaringly obvious. Exactly. But I completely agree with both of you. I think, you know, we do show up and act like we're entitled sometimes. And, you know, part of that, I think, is because our parents all gave us participation trophies just for showing up. So we feel sometimes I, I agree. that we, I agree. we deserve that acknowledgement yeah, just for yeah. showing up. So, Michelle, I expect a medal after this show, please. So I'd like so, to. <laughs> this truly is going to go down in history for me as being the fastest show I've ever done. How long have we been talking? 55 minutes. Oh, Get no. out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so usually I like to give like a whole bunch of time for you to have your last word, but you guys, 
you have two minutes, okay? So I want you to have the last word of anything that if it didn't get said, you want to have it said, or you want your contact information, go. Yeah, so um, I really just want to impart on you guys, especially like all the millennials out there, like work in collaboration, not competition with one another. Like you're all in this together, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And I think like the best and most amazing things that you're going to get out of it are going to be when you're collaborating and not fighting against one another to be the better person. And you can find me at my title holder page, which is Miss Gilbert, um, Arizona. Or you can find me at my personal one, which is the Arizona Barbie. And yeah, or you can see me at the Savvy Blondes. Absolutely. And one last thing I would just like to say is, you know, feel empowered no matter what you're doing. Like show up in such a way that you are confident in who you are, no matter what age you are, no matter what your skill set is. Don't let anyone make you feel that you don't deserve to be there. Um, and you can find us. We launch our episodes each and every week on the Savvy Blondes channel on YouTube. We are also on Instagram at the Savvy Blondes. Me personally, you can find me um, on Instagram at Ash Krepnik. It's just my first and last name. And then you can also find my husband's and my new venture, Our Little Romance, which Jacob is helping us with at www.ourlittleromance.com or on Instagram at Our Little Romance. So we're really looking forward to connecting with all of you amazing viewers, and we hope that you guys enjoyed the show today. Oh, well, I know I did. Thank you. Thank you. So much yeah. contributing Thank you. to such us. an amazing conversation. So I'm going to close with a word from our sponsor. Oh, Rhino. can I thank our sponsor really quick? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we have our sponsor, which is Thrive Coworking in Gilbert. They are a women-only co-working space that provides a safe, supportive, and connecting co-working space for women. So whether you are just starting out on your business or you are ready for an office of your own, they've got space for you and they would love to have you come down. And if you go down there and mention us, they will hook you up with yes. a free day pass. That is awesome. I'm so glad you got that in. So anyways, a word from our sponsor is Rhino Online Strategies and eCreativity will free up your precious and limited time as a business owner to do what you do best, which is running and growing your business. We help you grow your business by partnering with you, to identify your content and marketing needs and provide you with fresh, innovative, dynamic copy that will effectively connect your market. Our marketing strategies combine customized content with expertise and targeting and reach through social media channels by posting engaging content to targeted specific audiences to capture email ad addresses and build your email list along with analytics to optimize social ads and posts. All which lead to increased customer engagement, a higher conversion rate, and increased sales. We help empower you to have in control of your business and future by amplifying your method and delivering it to the right market. Thanks for listening. This is Michelle and Jacob wishing you continued prosperity in 2019 and beyond. <laughs>